Hi everybody, welcome to part two. And if you didn't see part one, go and watch it because I'm not telling you what happened in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to say that. Anyway, um, Egyptian Prodigy will now give his side of the story of how meta dragon players can also receive, um, well, not abuse as it were, but uh, snobby meta advice. Oh yes. Um, I think the biggest thing, um, as far as what, what we receive on our end, like from an abuse standpoint, is going to be from people who, I think the biggest thing is going to be the, the extra deck. Um, mm. the, the things that we elect in our extra deck always sets us apart. Yeah. For instance, I like running Cider Dragons. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just an inclination because I like the show. I don't know. I enjoy running Cyber Dragons. Things like, I wish I didn't have a ghost copy, um, Black Wing Dragon. All right. I don't know what it is. Like, I don't. But I really enjoy running, like, here, I'll show you the playset. The only one that I don't run is Power Tool, and it's honestly because I don't have enough room, and um, <laughs> I don't like messing up Totem Dragon. Okay, fair So, is. let's see. That's kind of like me, then. I hate, I love Totem Dragon. It works so well in Dragon decks, yet you have to be very specific with your cards without messing up Totem. Right, exactly, exactly. So, th that's the abuse that I have received, personally, is the fact that, you know, I don't run things like yeah. Catastrophe. Right, just or, just to, just uh -huh. to confirm, because there's a bit of a glare on the thing, but there is Black Rose Dragon, Black Feather Dragon, Stardust Dragon, I can't see what that one is, is that Ancient Fairy? Yes. Ancient Fairy and Red Daemons, or Red Dragon Archfiend, so if that's because you can't yes. see because of the glare, that's them there. Right. So, um, and I enjoy my extra deck. You know, each of these cards are meta, um, besides Black Winged, um, and Red Dragon Archfiend. People don't really run that anymore. And I receive a lot of, um, I'll say, negative feedback on uh, Red Dragon Archfiend. But I like it. Mm. Um, um, another popular card that... Um, I get a lot of kickback on is Exploder. And the whole reason why I love Exploder is because its effect is so underrated. The fact that you can pretty much get rid of anything that doesn't have 2400 attack. Yeah. I've got one myself. You know? Sorry, she's, she's upside down. I've got one myself, and he's actually, his. I agree that his effect is actually kick ass. And also, if if you, when you run when you ran your hopeless blue eyes deck, you know you could synchro with that with white stone and that card into dark end dragon if you needed to, which was or any exactly. or any level eight that you need to. It's a, you know, it's a level seven along with black rose or ancient fairy is an excellent way to synchro into a specific synchro or just go into a level eight, no matter what, right. with a white stone of legend if you ran it. Exactly. Exactly. Um. So, I mean, plus, I think a lot of it is just, people get really upset when they get beat by Dragon players, um, <laughs> because we haven't been top tier in a long time. Mm. So when you have a build that comes that comes along that's actually successful, it kind of upsets people, because people will go into a tournament with a certain mindset. Like, if I go to the tournament and I lose to, and it's just an example, Grave Keepers, I'm okay with that because that's what they feel is supposed to happen. If I'm going to lose to something, it's going to be top tier. Yeah. But what people don't realize is that there isn't too much that a dragon deck can't simply just run over. Like, Sam, I never had an issue with Samurais. Just run right over them, you know? Um, yeah, I remember, I remember um, it's Dr. Sinai, Nikros, he... Um, it was only one duel I won, but as soon as I got Blue Eyes out in the field, he couldn't do anything because none of the. I mean, let's face it. How many monsters nowadays have attack power over twenty five hundred, or three thousand? Right. Exactly. Three thousand, which right. is the maximum most dragons have. Right, right. Probably the most staple synchro monster in the game is Stardust Dragon. I don't care what deck you you run. I don't care what else you have in your extra deck, you are probably, probably 90% of the time going to have at least one copy of Stardust, because it has a pretty awesome effect. Yeah. Run right over that. I'm, you know, I mean, there's there's not too much, you know, that we can't get over. 
even if you take a card like here, I'll show you Colossal Fighter, which was popular for a while. Okay. Yeah. A card like Colossal Fighter. We don't care that it comes back. I have no problem swinging again. You know, like, it does not matter. And especially now that we have um, um, things like Photon Dragon. Yeah. It does not matter. It does not matter. So, like, when people lose to the deck, they honestly get upset. Yeah. I've it thankfully. Gets, it's not top tier. Yeah. Thankfully. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Well, thankfully, I've never ever experienced in a real life duel, like a tournament duel, anybody getting upset when they got beat by dragons. They're like, you know, they would get teased by their friends and that, but they would say, oh, that's a really good game, well done with the deck and everything. The only time I ever get abuse when I duel and beat somebody is on Dueling Network. Because it's it's so true that people hide use the internet to hide their true identities and true selves sometimes but that'll be a topic for another another day with dual network and everything i could probably we could probably get a group topic with everybody who does use it cuz that would be interesting to see oh yeah definitely oh yeah yeah dueling, dueling network is the worst yeah. like it's good I for testing it. it's good for testing decks i agree and dueling your friends if you haven't got say skype or MSN or whatever. It's a very good alternative. It's just that the ego of some of the Nimrods on there. Ugh, I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you know, and just like you said, I mean, people, people act a certain way on the internet. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't even want to start ranting. No, don't, don't start. Don't we'll turn this into a rant video. <laughs> playing the game the same way you would as if the person were sitting in front of you. Yes. That was the reason why it was created. To, to give you instant access to duelists all over the world. You have access to every single card ever created in the game. You should be using that forum to meet people, to experiment with your decks. It, it could be a money saver because you can put a... because cards are expensive. Yeah. As, 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 um, as, as M. Cole 40 said and Kalo Shade said, it's literally a no budget, budget zone. You can create the deck of it your is. dreams on there and test it out and have fun with it and everything that you can't do in real life. So Exactly. Mm. Or, you know, it'll, it'll show you, you know, what cards are worth spending money on. Yeah. You know, like, it's terrible when you buy a card and you, you haven't gotten really a chance to, like, play with it. And, you know, you set your deck up, and then you actually go to use it, and it's terrible. Yeah, and I've been in that situation. I've been in that situation. This was, like, long before I discovered Mad for Miniatures. I used to order my cards off online um, quite a bit, test them out, and but because I didn't properly play in meta or duels until about three years ago, I thought my deck was awesome, and then when I went to Mad for Miniatures, I got absolutely blutered. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how it is. That's how it is. Yeah. Not only that, I've learned a lot from doing that work because mm. you see a plethora of different decks. And people get more creative on doing that work, I'll be honest, because there's not a money aspect to it. Yeah. You just create, 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 create. So I've, I've learned, as a matter of fact, the Dark World structure deck, I learned how to play that deck just from being on Duel Network. Wow, that's so, pretty cool. Yeah, like I knew <laughs> nothing about Dark World. I've never yeah. even heard of them, but because of doing that work, it gives it gives you the opportunity to learn, you know, yeah. different playing styles, different cards, um, different ways to use your deck. I mean, it, it's yeah. really an awesome form. But I think that yeah. just like everything else in Yu-Gi-Oh, it gets abused. And also to get actually actually to get back on topic, Dual Network is brilliant for Dragon Duelists because even now a lot of Dragon cards are still pretty blinking expensive. And oh, yeah. with Drag and the you know, with um, and because uh, even um, what was it? You know, Lad has been reprinted so many times as well as Ultimate Dragon and the Blue Eyes and everything. But the original starter deck, Kaiba Blue Eyes, I checked out the other day, and this is the original starter deck. Uh, last time I checked it, it was about eighty pound, and that was on Cool Kingdom. But then again, wow. Cool Kingdom apparently are a bit overpriced. But that's I don't know about that. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Like even cards like um, like Totem Dragon. Totem Dragon in U.S. dollars is about. I think Totem is at thirteen dollars now. Well, um, on eBay, the minimum I saw for Totem when I was searching for three a while ago was fifteen pounds, which is about twenty dollars or so in your money. It's gone down a right. little bit since then because that was a few months ago when I checked. But right. with the new Dragon Structure deck coming out, um, what's the betting Totem's going to get a reprint? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Are they reprinting Blue Eyes? Yes, they are. And Red Eyes. Oh. And Red Eyes Darkness. <laughs> and Chaos what? Sorcerer and Light Pulse. And they're making two new dragons, Light Pulsar Dragon and Dark Flare Dragon. Yeah. I hate, uh, this is I'm this really is excited. what it looks like. It looks like a chaos, hopeless dragon. That's exactly what it looks like, and I'm really excited. Yeah, Do same you know here. Which Arthur using for blue eyes? Nope, not yet. Oh, Nothing confirmed. So Nothing confirmed yet, except for the two new dragon cards and just a small list. It's actually due to come out on my birthday, ironically, which is the 10th of December. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's when it, that's when it's released over in Japan, right? Yeah, that's right. If only if it was in English, that would be a perfect birthday present for me. Oh well, <laughs> wishful thinking. I think, gonna, I think I'm gonna order it, um, and just see what it's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Because it, it this is gonna be a lot of fun. Oh dear. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to end the discussion there now, um, everybody, because uh, my dinner is ready apparently. So um. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Egyptian Prodigy. Thank you for joining. No worries. Thanks yep. for having me. No problem. And we hope you enjoyed it, you good tubers. So till the next wee discussion, uh, take care. And from me and Egyptian Prodigy, we are signing out. So see you around. Bye.